Welcome to Dashing Dish. Can elegant really be made easy? Of course it can. Today I'm gonna to share some really simple spins on my favorite Italian dishes that make even a novice in the kitchen look like a pro. My pastor Chris is here and I'll be making some of my tried and true Italian recipes with an elegant spin. Chris comes from an Italian heritage, so my recipes will surely be put to the test. Cheesy cauliflower broccoli gratin with a crunchy topping. Incredibly simple and elegant Parmesan, salmon, and asparagus. And for dessert, a decadent tiramisu trifle. Elegant doesn't have to be intimidating. Let me show you how easy and delicious it can be right in your own kitchen. Oftentimes when we think of elegant food, we think of food that takes a labor of love to prepare. That's why I think we only see cheesy potatoes au gratin at holidays. Not only are they a labor of love, but they're extra rich, cheesy, and creamy. So in order to make the cheesy, creamy base to this recipe, I have one cup of cottage cheese, one cup of plain Greek yogurt. And this is gonna make the creamy, cheesy base to our cheese sauce. Then I have one half cup of Parmesan cheese. And I'm just gonna add everything for the cheese sauce into a small bowl. Then we have one egg. And then for the second egg, we're just gonna do an egg white. And this is gonna be really simple. You just break it in half, and then you just kinda toss the egg back and forth so you get the egg white in there. And what that does is the egg white just helps bind everything together. Then one half teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of garlic powder, and one fourth teaspoon of onion powder. Then we're gonna stir this together. Now to swap out the potatoes in this recipe, instead of potatoes that we think of as a rich, savory dish at the holidays, we're gonna use cauliflower and broccoli instead. Now you could just use cauliflower for this recipe, but I really like the combination of cauliflower and broccoli. So we're gonna do both today. In order to prepare the cauliflower and broccoli for this recipe, I just simply steam it in the microwave or you could steam it in a pot or even roast it in an oven. So we have our steamed cauliflower and broccoli here and I'm gonna add our ingredients for our cheese sauce right to the bowl and I'm gonna stir to combine everything so that the cauliflower and broccoli is nicely coated in this wonderful cheese sauce. So a lot of times when I go out to eat, I will look at the most fancy, elegant dishes. And what I'll think to myself is, how can I make this at home? Not only in an easier way, but with a healthy spin on it. And when I started to learn how to cook, I remember that I was so overwhelmed by looking at all of the ingredients and all of the really long methods. And I thought, there's no way I can learn how to cook this at home. And then I started to just take recipes and find simple ways to put an easy spin so that I could make it really simple. You see how I put everything into one bowl and I just stirred it together so it made for a really simple way of making this recipe. Now I'm gonna take everything in this bowl and just add it to an eight by eight baking pan that I sprayed with cooking spray. And then we're just gonna use a spatula to spread it out. And you'll be surprised at how easy this is. And you might find yourself actually making it not just for a special occasion, but for an everyday weeknight as well. 
It makes for a wonderful side dish to have with grilled chicken or any of your favorite cuts of meat. Then I'm just gonna top it with one cup of shredded cheese. You could do Asiago cheese, mozzarella, cheddar, anything you like. Now I'm gonna put it in the oven at 450 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes until the cheese gets nice and bubbly on top. A few years back, we had our pastor Chris over for the Super Bowl. My sister Emily and I left the house so the guys could enjoy some guy time to watch the game without the girls. Emily and I went out to dinner, went shopping, got coffee, enjoyed ourselves, and when we came home a few hours later, we were surprised to find the house was a complete mess. The guys were in the basement and it looked like some pretty serious recipe experimentation went down while we were away. There were endless pots and pans, dishes, and food all over the kitchen, and there was even a bowl with melted cheese that looked like an explosion went off in the microwave. Emily and I called up our husbands from the basement and asked what had happened, and they told us that Chris was trying to teach them how to make his infamous queso dip. The picture of five guys trying numerous approaches at salvaging a cheese dip was quite the sight to imagine. Needless to say, all the guys were put to work after the game was over. And a few months later, Pastor Chris enrolled in a community cooking class. Apparently his queso dip experience made him feel that he had some room to grow in the kitchen. He's since been back to our house for many games with the standing rule that all snacks will be made by Emily and I from now on. So we're cooking an elegant meal here today and I have my pastor, Pastor Chris Palmer here with me in the kitchen. Hello Chris, thanks for joining me. Good to finally be with you, Katie. <laughs> Good to be in the dash So kitchen. he often brags about his cooking skills um, because he is an Italian <laughs> heritage. So he's always talking about his fish dishes and all of the fancy dishes he's making at home. So I said, all right, let's put him to the test. We're gonna bring him here in the kitchen to make an elegant meal. So we're making really easy Italian elegant food today. And so we're gonna make salmon asparagus dish that has a Parmesan topping. And have you ever done a Parmesan type coating on your asparagus? I can tell you I have a few times. Okay, well good. So you know how delicious it is. Us Italians love Parmesan. So I'm gonna start by making the seasoning. What I'll have you do, we already washed the asparagus. I'm gonna have you trim it down. And a really simple rule of figuring out where you should trim asparagus is you just wanna hold a piece of asparagus and then just snap it. And this will be the tough end. So that's kind of your guide of where you wanna cut the asparagus down. Now, if you're a little bit scared to waste that much asparagus, you could always do about an inch of the end off and then toss the tough end. So you can go ahead and get started on that and then just place it on the baking pan. And I'm gonna start with the seasoning. I have 1 4th teaspoon of onion powder, 1 half teaspoon of garlic powder, and this is where all the flavor comes in, is all of these spices and seasonings. One fourth teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of paprika, one tablespoon of parsley, and you can kind of just eyeball that. One tablespoon of minced garlic, and then one fourth cup of Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna mix this spice blend together. And then Chris, I'm gonna give you about two tablespoons of this spice mix. Okay. And you can kind of just sprinkle it over the top of the asparagus. All right, sounds easy enough. And just kind of coat them all in the seasoning. Then I'll have you take the cooking spray and just get a good quality cooking spray, olive oil, avocado oil, and spray it really good over the asparagus. And then what I'll do is I'll add 1 4th cup of Greek yogurt to this seasoning mix. And then I'm gonna borrow your knife here. I'm gonna cut this lemon. And then we're gonna do the juice of half a lemon. Now Chris, Tell me, how has your Italian heritage played a role in your cooking? When I went to Italy for the first time in 2013 and saw the cuisine they had there, it was not just a 
food for them, it was a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so you could see that in Italy, everything evolves around the table. They eat dinner there for three or four hours. And so food's very important and it's a passion. And when I went to Italy, I caught that passion. And how do you think your cooking classes have kind of sharpened your skills for cooking? You know, they've taught me to put my love into cooking, to do it the right way, because cooking is so important because it's not just about the food, but it's about showing people love. Mm -hmm. And that if you do something the right way or you improve yourself to do it, you can give your best to people. That's so good, I love that. And you know, we're preparing salmon today, and I have to ask you, have you ever made salmon? I love salmon. I love fish as well, I but I think a lot of people are intimidated by fish yeah. um, because it, can seem a little bit tricky, a little bit scary when you think about, okay, how do I prepare this and you know, how do I make sure that it's cooked through, not overly cooked and dry. So this is a really simple way to prepare fish and it's no fail because I'm gonna take this topping with the seasonings and the Greek yogurt, the lemon juice, and I'm just gonna spread it on top of the salmon. We'll just have you place it right next to there. And what I like to do is I like to have things all on one baking pan. And the nice thing is this cooks up all at the same pace. So you can have it all in one pan. And then Chris, I'll have you go ahead and kind of just spread this on just like that. All right. Since we moved our asparagus, I'm gonna give this another shot of cooking spray. And really you could drizzle some oil over, but I like to just use cooking spray so I can control how much oil goes on. The nice thing about spraying it with oil just before baking is it does cause that Parmesan topping to really crisp up and get golden brown. And that looks really good. So we're gonna pop this in the oven, 425 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes and everything will cook up perfectly and then we'll make dessert. Can't wait. All right. Does the thought of preparing an elegant meal intimidate you? Here are some tips to make some of your classy favorites at home. One, vary your colors. We eat with our eyes first. Adding a variety of colors to a meal can make even the simple foods look more appealing. Two, consider a combination of textures and flavors throughout your meal. Having a variety of textures such as crunchy nut topping on a crisp salad adds a nice elegant feel to a meal. And the variation of a sweet but tangy dressing is the perfect way to top it off without spending more time in the kitchen. And lastly, strive for a menu that you can make ahead. This allows you to prepare, clean up, and enjoy the gathering with your guests. Coming up next, I love making trifles for dessert, and today it's a classic, tiramisu. Decadent cream bursting with espresso flavor. It's elegant, it's Italian, and my favorite. The recipes from today's program are available at DashingDish.com. With thousands of delicious, clean eating recipes, hundreds of easy to follow workouts, plus a custom grocery list and meal planning tools, there's plenty to love about the Dashing Dish membership. Start your free two week trial today using code CTVN at checkout. Find everything you need for your journey to health with a Dashing Dish membership. Use code CTVN at checkout and start your free two week trial today. My pastor Chris is here in the kitchen with me today and we're putting an elegant spin on Italian food. And this is my absolute favorite part, it's dessert. And we're gonna put a slightly more casual, I think fun approach on tiramisu. So we're gonna do a tiramisu trifle. Have you ever made a trifle before? I can't say I have. Okay, well really a trifle is just a really pretty way of layering different delicious ingredients into a clear bowl. It not only impresses because it is beautiful to present, but also it's really easy because you don't have to bake anything. So it's perfect for summer, it's perfect for an elegant dish, and perfect for today because we're doing elegant Italian. So I'm gonna have you take, I have two packages of lady fingers here. You could do any kind of cookie if you didn't have lady fingers, just something that is firm enough that you can stick into coffee and kind of dip it in. And then we have one cup of chilled cold brew coffee. You could do a leftover cup of coffee that you popped in your fridge. 
just make sure it's not hot or it will completely melt the cookies. So I'll have you put the coffee into this shallow dish and then you can kind of just dip each one like French toast and then put it onto a piece of parchment paper so we can layer it into our trifle in just a moment. I have here one container of True Whip. True Whip is basically a cleaner or healthier version of a whipped topping. And so I have one container in a bowl and then one eight ounce package of cream cheese. Now, when I buy cream cheese, I like to use Greek yogurt cream cheese or one third less fat cream cheese. So just something that is making this dish a little bit lighter without completely nixing the cream cheese because sometimes you need it like a tiramisu. And then I have one half cup of monk fruit sweetener you could use any kind of sweetener you like, and then just a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And there we go. Then I'm just gonna mix this together, and this will be what we layer in between all of the lady fingers, and those look really good. So have you ever had tiramisu? I have, especially in Italy, and it is everybody's favorite dessert. Is it your favorite? It actually is. It's the best. So do you happen to know what it means in Italian? My pastor here is almost complete. Well, are you fluent in Italian? Uh, io parlo italiano un pochino. Okay, yeah, all over <laughs> my head. But he's, let's just say he can speak Italian pretty well. Um, you go over there quite often, don't you? I do, actually. Maybe three times a year or so. So you have a heart for Italy, mm -hmm. and I know that you have really been treated well by the people there, yes. and you've been served some incredible Italian dishes. Nice. So we'll have to see if these can compare today. That's right, and you asked what does it mean? It actually means to cheer me up. So when you're having a bad day in Italy, nothing cheers you up finer than tiramisu. I think that's true of any dessert, that's isn't true. it? That is true. <laughs> Anytime you're having a hard day, as long as you reach for a healthier version of a dessert, then I am all for it. Sometimes we all need a little bit of sweet to cheer us up. <laughs> so if you need a little bit more coffee to cover all those lady fingers, we can always just grab another cup from my pot from this morning, but it should be enough. And basically, really all you want, there's no precise way to do those, you just wanna make sure that you have enough cookies to make some layers, because we're gonna use this cream cheese filling to go in between the layers of cookies. And so we're gonna start with a layer of cookies and then go with the cream cheese filling. So you basically just want enough to go up to the top. And this looks really good. If you wanted to get this a little bit smoother, you could always use an electric beater, but between all of the cookies and the chocolate that we'll put in, it will taste absolutely perfect. And it saves you dishes as well. All right, Chris, good job. I'll have you finish up those, and then when we come back, we'll finish layering this, and we'll add the chocolate, the best part of all. Awesome. From the time Sean and I got married, we talked about having kids. Having a family together was one of our greatest heart's desires, so much so that we'd even picked out names for when the time came. A few years into our marriage, we felt the timing was right, and we started to pray about having a baby. We never imagined that it would take so long, just over seven years from the time that we desired to have a baby to actually get pregnant. About six months before we got pregnant with Maddie, my sisters Emily and Sarah announced that they were both expecting a baby around Mother's Day. It had been a dream of ours since we were little to have kids together, which made the desire to get pregnant deepen even more so in our hearts. We shared our prayer requests with our pastor Chris and we asked if he would stand in agreement with us. We joined hands and prayed for God's perfect timing for a baby. As we prayed, Chris said the Lord gave him a specific vision of a present being wrapped and handed to Sean. We knew the Lord had something special he was planning, and we praised him for this expectant hope he had placed in our hearts. Just a few weeks later, I found out I was pregnant and it all became clear what a gift this baby was from our Heavenly Father when I learned that I was due on Father's Day. Sean was handed the most precious gift just a few days before Father's Day when Madeline was born. 
All right, so now we're gonna start to do the fun part, which is layer the trifle. So I already put a few lady fingers in here. I'll have you continue to do that as the first layer. So think of it almost like a lasagna, where you're doing things in layers. So we're gonna do a layer of the cookies on the bottom that have been soaked in coffee. Then we're gonna do a layer of the cream cheese filling, and then we're gonna do some cocoa powder and a little bit of chocolate in between. Um, typically, tiramisu doesn't have chocolate in between the layers, the chocolate chips, I should say. It has cocoa powder, but the more chocolate, the better. That's I correct. Think. I think that. So I think why not something. go for it? That looks perfect. So I'll do a layer of the whipped topping here, just like that. So Chris, I have to ask you, you uh, prayed, I'll have you just shake some cocoa powder over that. All right. You prayed with us um, when we were praying for a baby, mm -hmm. and I know that you, gosh, you've been a pastor for a long time. How long have you been a pastor? I've been in full-time ministry for 14 years, pastoring for five and a half. When I was a young, a young man, I always had a heart for people. Mm -hmm. I would see people on vacation, Disney World, didn't matter where we're at, and I'd pray for them. I mean, I wouldn't walk up to them all the time and pray, but in my heart, I would pray for them. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that God was calling me to serve people, mm -hmm. and that the way He was calling me to serve people was to preach the Word of God to them and to pray for them. And that's why when we were praying for Maddie, it was so rewarding to me because had the opportunity to join my faith with other people's faith mm -hmm. and to see God work uh, and bring to pass the results of that prayer, which was tremendous. Yeah. More than anything, I know that you have such a heart for people just by watching you lead and, and minister. And I know that it, it can't always be easy, mm -hmm. but God has definitely called you to it. And you just, you do it so, with such excellence. So you really do serve our church well, and it's such an incredible thing to, to be a part of what God is doing through, through the church today. And I think more than ever, um, people are in need of truth and a softening of heart that can only come by the Word of God. Absolutely, and I appreciate that, Katie. And uh, you know, you and Sean have been wonderful members, and it's people like you that make it easy to pass and rewarding the pastor. Well, I will tell you that you're not only a pastor, but an awesome friend. And I think that this is going to be a really nice time to just be able to sit down and enjoy a wonderful meal together. So let's go check on our salmon and asparagus. It should be done by now and enjoy this wonderful dessert. Sounds good. Coming up next, will my dishes pass the taste test with Pastor Chris? Did I truly prove him elegant can be made easy at home? Let's find out. Enjoy entertaining? Enjoying food around a table is one of the most important places of human connection, which is why we see people all throughout scripture fellowshipping around the table. Even the most simple meals shared with others can be the most nourishing to our body and soul. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me in the kitchen. It was so much fun. And I think that our dishes look absolutely elegant and delicious. Our salmon and asparagus turned out wonderful, and so did our au gratin cheesy cauliflower and broccoli bake, which I think you should try and make at home. You weren't with me when we made it, but you can try some, and I think you'll love it. And of course, we have to start with dessert first. It's the best part of the meal. And if we're cooking Italian, that's how we really enjoy our meal, with starting with sweets, right? That's right. So how would you say in Italian, thanks for joining us and have a great day? Grazie tutti, Dio ti benedica. Okay, what he said. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. And if you would like to try recipes just like these, head over to dashingdish.com where you can find recipes and more to nourish your body and soul. Cheers. <laughs>